Hello fellow gamers, I'm Christopher Christman of Retro Game Network, and coming up next, a look at last week's retro video game news on the RGN Files for the week ending Saturday, January 26, 2019. In the RGN Files this week, the end of a video game era is fastly approaching, as Nintendo will officially cease all operations of the Wii Shop Channel effective this Wednesday. The Wii Shop Channel originally launched shortly after the release of the Nintendo Wii back in 2006, and was the method to download games via virtual console, alongside of being used to offer video streaming service software downloads, as well as other channels that previously provided news, weather, and surveys. Nintendo originally announced the discontinuation of the aging service in September of 2017 with Wii points no longer being added to the accounts as of March 26th of last year. The service is being disconnected so that Nintendo can focus on modern platforms such as the eShop for the Switch platform. Any points that Wii gamers have on their Shop Channel accounts must use them before the discontinuation of the service as the points will not be transferred to any other Nintendo accounts. In addition, the remaining video on demand services that were available on the system, including Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime, will also no longer be available as of that date as well. The discontinuation of the Wii Shop Channel marks the official end of the Wii era, as all online services will be considered terminated at that time. The Wii Shop Channel will end all operations on Wednesday, January 30. In other Nintendo-related news, a brand new fighter stick has recently been created within the homebrew community, with such an input device being created for the short-lived Virtual Boy platform. The controller, known as the BX240, is the creation of Benj Edwards, and marks what he calls, quote, possibly the world's first Virtual Boy fighting stick, end quote. A journalist, technology historian, and musician, Edwards started making arcade-style peripherals back in 2016. The buttons and the joystick controls were created by using parts from Samwa Denzi, a Japanese manufacturer of parts for current model video arcade cabinets. The fighting stick was created specifically for use with Hyper Fighting in mind, which is an unofficial homebrew port of the popular Street Fighter 2, which was created back in the mid-2010s. Despite this being the game that the controller was designed for, Edwards has stated that the input is compatible with all Virtual Boy titles, but says that all of the functions of the right D-pad on the original controller have been remapped to separate buttons instead. The controller is compatible with original Nintendo Virtual Boy equipment, and while not being mass-produced at this time, orders for small quantities are being accepted via Twitter. Due to the time-consuming nature of the device's design, no price has been finalized for the controller as of the record date of this podcast. In other hardware-related news, a brand new paddle-style controller is currently being developed for the Intellivision video game console. Some gamers may not have even realized that there was never a paddle joystick released for the system during its original lifespan. However, one fan of the Intellivision is looking into making such an input device a reality nearly 40 years after the system was originally released. This upcoming device is the creation of Charles Dicer, who has recently uploaded a video on YouTube showing off the process of the development of the product. This is not the first time that such a device had been made in the works by the creator, as a similar paddle controller was also created by him about a year ago for the ColecoVision platform. As this is an early work in progress, Dysart has stated that during the process of this first attempt, the input is not specifically being done as an analog to digital solution, and has actively went through a series of changes during its short development thus far. He has also stated that if the future tests are successful, he will have circuit boards created for testing, and has not yet ruled out the possibility of using a 3D printer for the final creation in the event of mass production. There is currently no word on a time frame on when the project may be considered complete. Intellivision Revolution has officially published an updated port of the arcade classic Donkey Kong Jr. for the Intellivision platform. While an official version of the game was released during the system's original lifespan, this new release offers a variety of updated audio visuals that make the game more attractive to players. In addition, the title screen is much more accurate to the arcade cabinetry, and there are also some screen location changes of such things as the player's current score and level. The music also sounds clearer than the original version from 1983, and doesn't reset every time there is an attack performed when compared to the original version. In a somewhat daring decision, considering the licensing that would have had to have been required by Nintendo, the people at Intellivision Revolution have decided to publish the new port of Donkey Kong Jr., physically offering it available for sale to the general public. Your purchase of the updated version of the game for the Intellivision platform includes not only the cartridge itself, however a box, manual, as well as appropriate overlays. The cost of the set is $60, plus $7 shipping within the United States. 
Super Fighter Team has made the announcement that they will be releasing the Japanese Mega Drive exclusive title Vixen 357 to Western audiences for the first time. The company, which is known for localizing games to North America, made the decision to port the game thanks to the quote, high marks and praise, end quote, that it was given by the Genesis gaming community. In the year 2396, the nation of Marisma Harp completed development of the newest and most advanced line of combat operation robots. However, when Marisma Harp's military installations suddenly became attacked by another nation, Slash Team was called to the front lines of battle. While this release is being created with the original equipment in mind, Super Fighter Team's Brandon Cobb has stated that even though there is money to be made by bringing the game to modern platforms, that they have no interest in supporting such machines, saying specifically, quote, call it what you will, eccentric, purist, we call it devotion, end quote. The company will be offering the game to North American Sega Genesis players in a physical package that includes a cardboard-style box, manual, and cartridge that is compatible with both NTSC and PAL equipment. The game is now currently available for pre-order and sells for $63 within the U.S. The games are expected to be shipped out sometime this year. Homebrew development team Oniric Factor is currently working on a new game called Awaken for the MSX computer platform. The company has been working on releasing a variety of other original titles for the Japanese system, including The Lost Wind, Spring Warrior, and Drival. However, has announced that Awaken is now taking its top priority. In this upcoming adventure game, your mission is to reach four specific points of a map, which is centered around 200 screens. You need to obtain a total of four different keys, alongside of other necessary objects that will help you advance to other areas of the map. It has been compared to other franchises such as the Legend of Zelda series, both in storyline and gameplay. Awaken will be taking advantage of the MSX Music Standard, which is used for FM-based sound generation on the MSX platform. The game will only be compatible with MSX2 level systems that have at least a minimum of 128K of RAM. It is currently unknown if this will be a digital-only or physical media release, however other games from the developer have previously received the physical treatment. Awaken is planned to be released by the end of March of this year. And finally this week, we have officially entered award show season, with the Grammys and the Emmys not too far away. And while it may not have a famous red carpet, the 2018 Atari Awards are currently underway. Atari Age, in conjunction with Zero Page Homebrew, as well as the Atari 2600 Homebrew Companion, have joined forces to present awards to the best in Atari 2600 Homebrew titles. This gives original developers a chance to be celebrated with their efforts in creating brand new VCS titles way into the 21st century. Over 130 Homebrew titles have had the potential, and the nominees have officially been announced. To be eligible, the program must have had a ROM image or physical cartridge released physically during the 2018 year. Categories for Best Overall Homebrew, Best Atari Basic Homebrew, Work in Progress Program, Best Game Hack, Demonstration, Graphics, Music and Sound, Packaging, and Technological Advancements are being awarded, and gamers are going to get to vote for what they feel are the best of the new. In addition, the games that have been nominated have had their ROM images made available for the public to try out so that gamers can vote with confidence. Voting ends on February 18th, and the 2018 Atari Awards will be broadcast live on the Zero Page Twitch channel on February 23rd at 3 p.m. Eastern. The nomination list and ROM downloads package can be found at RetroGameNetwork.com. That's it for this week's edition of the RGN Files. For those listening on VGM on FM, please stay tuned. There'll be more video game music coming up shortly. For complete details of any of this week's stories, visit RetroGameNetwork.com. And don't forget to check us out on our social media outlets, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at RetroGame Network, and on Twitter and Twitch at RetroGameNet. For the RGN Files, I'm Christopher Christman. This week's news story is provided by the following. The Atari H Forums, Brian Matherin, Kotego, MSX Blog, MSX Resource Center, Nintendo Life, Nintendo of America, Retro Gaming Magazine, Retro Magazine, Zero Page Homebrew.